We are Pro Cannabis Media. Uh, welcome back to Cannabis Chat. I am Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media, the host of Cannabis Chat. And I welcome in a friend, Beth Dost, with us. Beth is the only person that I've ever had on my In the Weeds podcast, We Talk Live show, and now Cannabis Chat. So I'm not sure what that means. Well, I feel honored. <laughs> you should, I, I, and I, I appreciate really your honored. honor. And yes. I appreciate you making the effort, too, because I know you've had uh, kind of a traumatic uh, time. So thank you for being oh, here. Oh, my pleasure to be here. No, this is important. It, it, yes. And, and one of the things that I know that we share is the, the um, importance of education yes. in this, about this plant medicine that is cannabis. Hugely and important. And on Wednesdays, we will be... De- devoting the, our two-hour live stream to education about cannabis. Good. Now, what does that mean? I have no idea. We're still doing this. I mean, I'm going to bring in people like Beth. I'm going to bring in educators. We have already interviewed a few educators, and we're going to go to them. But I'm going to throw a question at you immediately. Mm-hmm. There are so many people out there, um, and I don't want to say posing as experts, because I believe everybody has something to teach everyone else. Mm-hmm. Okay? But there are... There are cannabis courses in college that, and there are also online cannabis certificate courses. There are companies like Greenflower in California uh, that uh, Max Simon founded. And when I got my medical card, I spent a ton of time on the Greenflower videos learning about the plant. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to learn about the plant, do, do you, not that I'm looking for you for a recommendation, but what would be the best way to find out, besides just Googling it, mm-hmm. what is legit and what isn't legit? Well, that's hard. I know. That's a very hard question. <clears throat> I know. I started right off the <laughs> hard one. I know. But I would go to mm-hmm. a few kind of tried and true and trusted sources of information. Mm-hmm. I think that your show is rapidly becoming a source of ev- information, education, and what's going on. Yep in the weeds. Right. I also think <laughs> companies that have been around for a long time, so prior, so like United Patients Group. Right. You know, John Malanka and his team um, are very knowledgeable in cannabis, and uh, they've been, the thing about older, uh, more uh, established yep. and reputable yep. companies yep. is that they have survived the ebbs and the flows. Right. And I think that's very important. Uh, there's a lot mm-hmm. of new things popping up, some of these older, um, and you can look at, you know, they'll often say we were established in like UPG, Mm -hmm. 2011. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know that they've been doing this now for almost 10 years. So, you know, they have to have some meat behind their staying power in the industry. So look in the mature markets, the Colorado, the Washington States, the California, because they've been doing this and they've perfecting their messaging. Yes. Um, but what's amazing to me, Beth, and I know you understand this, the science behind the plant. Yes. For instance, Emma Chasen, who we talked to, she's from Oregon. Yep. Uh, she went to Brown University and was a botanical scientist. Mm-hmm. You know, she studied plants, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that a good background on what... If you're going to learn about the cannabis plant, you want to learn about a lot of plants, Yes, don't you? I think that that... A broad brush, yes, because I could say as a nurse, you know, it's always go out and get that one year experience in medical surgical so that you can see a wide variety of different maladies and how then to apply your nursing practice. Well, similar in cannabis, yes, it's great to know the botanicals because you understand how plants work, Mm -hmm. but cannabis in and of itself is a whole different ball game. So I'm sure even people that study botanically right. and are experts <coughs> are looking at cannabis and saying, wow, <coughs> this is really awesome because we've never studied it quite like this before. Right. I remember uh, I went to Tufts University. I know people are shocked to hear that. Um, <laughs> but not. I had a lot of friends who were pre-med and they took that organic chemistry yes. class that was by far the reputation in the 70s was the toughest class you'll ever take, yes. right? And I remember them studying and being in the library and doing all these things. So it made an impression on me, the liberal arts history major. 
or as I like to say, I majored in old news and fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so chemistry, though, and the chemistry of the plant, there, even though we know it's still federally illegal, mm -hmm. even though we know there are efforts to open up research for in-state cannabis grown products now, mm -hmm. right? And that just happened. And we're, we're, I get that part too. Every, it seems like every few months they discover another cannabino cannabinoid. Cannabinoid Very or good. cannabidiol? Yes, right? cannabidiol. Okay, no, cannabinoid. cannabinoid. There, it's a chemical in the damn plant. That's all right? right. And it's got a fancy it's name. It's called a cannabinoid. It. All right? That's right. And <laughs> someone cannabidiol who knows, is CBD. Cannabidiol is CBD, right. <laughs> and speaking of dial, yes. we're going to get John Malanka on the phone oh, here in a minute. So you'll great. actually hear the ring, I think, and then we'll just talk to John. Good. And I explained to him that's how we do it. And then when we pick up, we say, hello, John. Actually, it'd be fun. You get to say hello. Oh, well, he's already there. Hello, hello John. I am. Hello, John. How are you? Hi. <laughs> it's Jimmy and Beth in studio. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you so much. Beth has been um, talking a lot about the United Patients Group because one of my first questions was to her was, how do you decide where you want to get your education in cannabis? You know, there's so many new... Uh, courses and, and, and colleges and uh, online certificate courses, you know, sprouting up and all experts. over. And experts. And, and experts. Yes. Right. And by we the way, talked about. and while I know a few experts too, my point is everybody has something to teach you. But what Beth said was when you come from a background like yours, John, that you lived it in California, you went through it both personally and now professionally as well. Yes. It, that's got to be the best way to learn is from a mature market, reputable teaching or curriculum. Do you, can you uh, agree with that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with it. And, I, and I, you know, I learn every day as well. You know, I speak with so many patients that are going through this. Um, and are we, are, we, are we on the air right now or not? We are on the air. I told you, as oh. soon as we pick up, we're on. <laughs> gotcha. Sorry, everybody. Hi. Hi. Have me on as well. Um, you know, we... We, I learn every day, um, and, and as you mentioned, I am, I've been on both sides right. as a patient advocate, as a caregiver, as a spouse that uh, uh, lost his wife to pancreatic cancer. So I've seen this medicine work, and I've seen it not work. And in my, my opinion, working, working is saving a life. And other times when people say, please don't get down on yourself because it worked for us, it allowed you know, our loved one to get out of the hospital and be home, you know, in his own bed. And uh, so for some people, the definition of work means means different for others. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of great information. There's a lot of misinformation. And so, you know, we try to stay on top of it. What we started at United Patients Group from day one back in 2011 is to be that um, hand-holding organization to help with families, uh, the p patients, the doctors, you know, to avoid the tangled web in this industry. You know, these are the questions asked. These are the questions to, uh, uh, things to avoid. You know, sometimes when you get a diagnosis like we had with my father-in-law, two weeks, you know, you don't want to go down, you know, one road for 10 days and realize you made the wrong mistake. And then you're like, now we're backpedaling. We only have four days to, to save, save someone's life. And, uh, um, you know, I say, say say someone's life because we work with a lot of cancer patients, you know, well, all patients, but, but a lot of cancer. I think cancer is, I don't say near and dear, but it is because it affected my father-in-law and it certainly affected uh, my wife. And, um, you know, I have a patient today that I'm working with that he's scared. He's 50 years old. He has lung cancer, stage four lung cancer, never a smoker. And that thing just blows me away. So what else is in our society that bringing on, you know, this, these this this element into into healthy people and so he's scared as anybody would be getting a diagnosis and so he's had so much information and i shared with him i said you know i don't want to step on anybody's toes who's already helping you but the, the sad thing he was getting all his cancer cannabis information from his chiropractor and i'm a fan of chiropractic i wanted to go i wanted to be a chiropractor my aunt and uncle are chiropractors so i'm not doubting that i just think that cannabis is not a one-size-fits-all you should and i'm not a doctor you should meet with a medical medical professional because it's not a one-size-fits-all. Age, weight, current health condition, sensitivities, other medications you may be on, 
Uh, these are all things to look at. And so when I shared this with him, you know, he didn't know if he was getting uh, taken to bed because they gave they came at him with a price tag of a few thousand dollars on his meds, medicine for cannabis medicine. And he's out here in California. And that's another thing, you know, yes, insurance doesn't cover it yet. Um, but you don't need to go more is not always better. And so I always recommend when families are going through this, don't go out of the gate, you know, and buy, you know, two to five thousand dollars worth of product. Try it. See if it works first. You can get some great medicine for a couple hundred dollars and then you can get, you know, you get you know, then then get higher amounts if that's if that's the route you want to go. So my advice to families is one, have this discussion with your doctor. It's not illegal to have your have this discussion with your doctor, but also um, you know, make sure the products that you try, you don't need to break the bank right away um, uh, when it comes to choosing your medicine, because sometimes you need to find the sweet spot. And if you go out and buy, you know, five months worth of medicine and realize that's not what you wanted, now you're stuck with medicine. And I see that all the time. You know, families like, gosh, I just spent all this money. What do I do? And they can't return it, right. you know? So, but uh, those are the things we do. And, uh, you know, we work with great people like Beth, who's on your show right now. So thank you, Beth. Beth has not only uh, been a patient, but a health advocate and a medical expert in this industry. She's spoken at um, um, a couple of United Patients Group conferences that we've done here in the U.S. And then uh, uh, in the Global DocuSeries, which I hosted uh, for the past three years, she was uh, a regular as a medical expert, and then she did a, a, a master class with us as well, and is continuing to do stuff here at the United Patients Group on our podcast. She had a she spoke about fibromyalgia. So, you know, I've seen this medicine work. You know, it's not for everybody, and I never want to give anybody false hope. Um, I want to give people hope. And so, uh, there's a lot of times I, when people come to us, and I route them away from cannabis. I've seen higher success with other things. So, that's my mindset of the goal is to, you know, see if we can put you on the track to, to becoming healed compared to, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to give anybody, anybody false hope. No, I totally, I totally get it, John. And, and, and a great opening, oh, a great opening remark. And I really want to follow this up with a discussion that I think both of you have tremendous insight on. And you kind of alluded to it when you said, go to your doctor and talk to them about it. Um, the doctors I talk to about it uh, have no clue. Uh, about yeah. cannabis, okay? They were trained in Western medicine. Yes. They're trained to deal with the symptom. Yes. You come to them with a symptom, they want to give you a pill or a prescription or a cream mm. to fix that symptom, not the cause. And yet this plant as a medicine mm -hmm. has been used for thousands of years because it can prevent and, br and bring down and actually heal the, the cause, mm -hmm. right? Uh, well, uh, Ethan Russo <clears throat> was one of the first that I know of to postulate what is something that must be very difficult to prove, but the endo endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome, whereupon he, his theory, he postulated a theory that the uptick in chronic diseases and all these other diseases, including cancer, autism, Alzheimer's, et cetera, that we didn't see about 100, 150 years ago right. is because we've removed cannabis from our food source, particularly in the form of hemp that the animals ate, the grasses. And therefore, we do not boost our endocannabinoid system the way we used to um, from the phytocannabinoids so we're relying on our own cannabinoids that we create. And, and then there's the receptor load. How many receptors do people have? And to the extent that they are filled with cannabinoids has an impact on health. And I think just trying to wrap your mind around the fact that this might actually be something that's essential to our wellness, this has been an enormously long human experiment with, I would say, disastrous outcomes taking it out of and and that fact that it still remains federally illegal with the amount of overwhelming science um, kind of tends to boggle your mind a lot of things about our government boggle my mind but I don't want to go there uh, John I, I want to go back to you for a second to kind of follow up with um, what Beth is talking about there in the meantime we've still made tremendous strides yes. You know, we, Beth used the word essential, and we're in the middle of the COVID pandemic right now. And, and there has been such a sense of 
legitimacy amongst other cannabis advocates that many of the states deemed this plant medicine cannabis essential. Um, we've made progress, correct? Yeah, we have. And I think it, um, you know, I think everyone, Beth was sharing, I think everyone should take it as, as a daily vitamin. The goal is not to be high. So I think, I don't know if a lot of your listeners live in legal states or illegal states. I know you're a national show, but you know, it's not illegal uh, nowadays with the, with the hemp farm bill. People can, uh, patients or people can get, uh, can't use patients and hemp together. So that's why I caught myself. But mm -hmm. uh, people can get uh, uh, one of the many cannabinoids. And when I say many, because there's about 140 different cannabinoids in the, uh, uh, that, that, that uh, by the part of the cannabis plant. THC is probably the most popular. Uh, some uh, find, I, I think, I think have, including THC. I think when you're battling anything, if you sleep and other things like that, THC does help with CBD. CBD does does help, but I think including, uh, as Dr. Russo always talks about, the in, on the entourage effect. Right. You know, all the cannabinoids working together, the terpenes working together, and it's like Prince would always use a, uh, a description of like baking a cake and leaving out the flour or the eggs. You know, Dr. Russo talks about having a symphony and having the horn section or the drum section missing, and that's. You know, it's like, oh, something's missing here. And the same thing with, with uh, you know, the endocannabinoid system that's in our bodies, the, uh, the, the entourage effect, um, you know, everything working together. And so, you know, I think everyone should be able to use this as a daily vitamin as yeah, well. Um, CBD is a, is a great way to, you know, to, to get into this. And, and we're seeing it everywhere, you know, and it's unfortunate that we are seeing it everywhere because you go down and fill up your gas and they're saying, you want a Slurpee? or and some cbd when you're checking out i just think that's not the place to get your cbd medicine there's some great companies out there um the, you know make sure your product is tested you the patient that is not responsible for the testing is who you buy it from you know they have lab uh, third-party lab testing they test your mold pesticides fecal matter metals pesticides i don't know if i said that already but um you know and, and make sure the lab results and i'm a I can't tell you how many times I tell, tell people is make sure the lab results are current. You don't want something that's, you know, three years old, you know, uh, two years, depending on how they store it is, is kind of the, 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 the expiration date. Um, but I think everyone should put it in their system. Help, help bring the body back to balance, help with sleep, help with anxiety, help with inflammation, you know, especially what's happening right now with the COVID. You know, and it does help with the immune system. When we don't have our sleep, even in a normal normal day, no, normal uh, month, years, whatever you want to talk about, um, you know, when you don't do that, chances are you you're grumpy, you're depressed, your your anxiety goes up, stress level goes up, and sometimes your immune system goes down. So, I think it's a, it is important um, to help, with especially what's going on right now, uh, and I think it is essential. You know, uh, I, you know, I, at the beginning, I talked, spoke about my wife, Corinne, you know, she passed of pancreatic cancer and pancreatic cancer is something that I don't wish upon anybody. And it was, you know, it, uh, you know, she was someone who didn't drink and smoke, worked out, stayed on top of her health. But I look back, <clears throat> I'm happy that she didn't go through her ailment now uh, in the midst of COVID because of the rules, you know, I, I, I talk to patients all the time. We have a family member right now. He's in the hospital. He's in his nineties and his wife can't even be in there. Yeah. I mean, how do you go married for 65 years and not be with your wife on his, uh, you know, his last days on this planet on Earth? and I just think that's, that's a tough thing for any family members that are going through this. And so, um, I'm, I'm, if, if, I'm not happy we went through this, but I'm glad we, we're not going through this right now. Um, and I know, a lot of people do, and cancer and ailments do not discriminate. And so I do believe cannabis should be essential. Um, you know, liquor stores are, <laughs> tattoo parlors are, I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know I think cannabis should be as well. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, John, um, when, and I heard Beth kind of reinforce what you said about the daily intake. Yes. Um, yeah. What is a low, if you're a regular, if you've been enlightened by, with this substance over your life or whatever, 30 years or whatever it is, what's a low dose of THC that you could take in the morning with a high dose of CBD 
and really not have that intoxication effect? I yeah. mean, is the well, is it, it, go ahead. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's the one thing. It's not a one size fits all. Right. You know, what works is one person. Right. Hey, I'm a lightweight. I'm happy at one to two milligrams. I, I, you know, and I can't have THC in the daytime. I do CBD in the daytime, but there's days that see when I take CBD, like today, it felt like I had a cup of coffee. So CBD affects some people differently, uh, gives the energy upbeat. Um, some patients, I know some senior citizens that are taking 20 to 50 milligrams of THC and they function. And when I hear they take 20 to 50 milligrams of THC, I call the company that sold it to them. I said, how could you do this? You know, and I go back to the family and say, I'm sorry. And they said, no, mom's feeling great. She didn't, she said, she, so everyone's different. Right. Um, you need to ask what's a normal dose. Again, you know, you could have success at one, one, one to two milligrams where other people have success at 25 milligrams per day. Um, could I work, go to work under, under 25, me personally, no, uh, but some, some people, some people can, you know. And there's um, also, uh, and, and John, would you not agree too, that sometimes it's the ratio. So you, when you ask, it, the question can get more complex because if you took 30 milligrams of CBD and 10 milligrams of THC and the 10, 8 milligrams of THC might be intoxicating to you alone. Right. With the 30 milligrams of CBD, it, you may not feel the THC at all, but right. you get that essential. And usually a cultivator or a good dispensary will throw THCA in there on top of that also, which is non-psychoactive. Right. So there's a lot of ways to take it. And I, John and I are in agreement. I, we feel that this is an essential. And I feel that it should be part of everybody's health and wellness regime. And you should take it every day, just like we, you should take vitamin D3 in um, Massachusetts or in the, the where we have very little light and um, all these things. And if, and it was not my original thought. It was actually Raphael Meshulam. Right. I have to give credit to the man. No. Raphael Meshulam was this one that said it should be as made as available as aspirin, which, by the way, you have a very hard time getting bufferin anymore. But I will tell you that um, when he said that, I couldn't. I was stunned that that was his comment on cannabis until I really learned about the endocannabinoid right. deficiency, uh, but the syndrome, the, having that as a system, right. and then being able to boost that system from outside. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that are already have rich in cannabinoids, and they may just take it as a recreational product for them. Right. There are other people that are depleted in cannabinoids, and they may not. They may have a may may not be a lightweight. They may have a hard time even experiencing a euphoria. Most people don't, but at some point, you know, it it some for some people they're just replenishing. And I'm not a doctor, so I don't speak to those really like spot on receptor. I love to hear physicians and scientists that talk about that receptor uptake. But um, you probably you... understand what they're talking about. I hear them talk, and it goes right <laughs> over my head, and I have like no idea. But I understand the premise you get of the what's presence. going on. That's right. And, and it's, it's filling a need. So indeed. And we all recognize uh, that it, you are self-medicating mm -hmm. with this product. Mm -hmm. And when you dose it, I know the, the mantra is to start low and go slow. Yep. Very important that we talk mm -hmm. to people about that because if you are doing an edible or a tincture, it's going to have a different effect on your yes. body um, than if you were just taking a puff or two or a vape hit or, new, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. however you're taking it. Mm -hmm. And um, that is the biggest challenge, I think, for the industry is how do you regulate the dosage? And now, and now I'm starting to hear about these apps where, where it will um, gauge and keep a record of what you're taking, what's in it, how much you've taken, I mean, that to me is terrific. Do you think we'll ever see the day where a cannabis certified physician will prescribe cannabis in milligrams? <laughs> like I get Oh my yeah, they, 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 they already do. They're doctors that re recommend, um, there you go. recommend mil mil milligram dosing. Yep. You know, right. I think le less is more. You have GW Pharmaceutical even on their, uh, on their website when it comes to Sativex, the, the spray for MS uh, made non-synthetic, but actually with cannabis. It's a, 2.75 milligram of THC, 2.75 milligrams of CBD. But even on there, yeah, this is a pharmaceutical company. They they basically say go low, go slow. 
Um, you know, every, everyone is different and, and less is more. You know, you may feel, find relief with two milligrams, you know, where others, you know, so I think um, you, you mentioned talking about these, these apps. I'm a big fan of journaling, you know, journal, journal, especially when you have a patient, um, write down everything. Oh, I had success with this. Oh, I didn't. I, I stayed, aw- stayed awake all night, you know, and so, uh, and this helps when in, in your, your journey of, of healing, um, I'm finding success with this. And you can flip back to your records and go, oh, yeah, no, I did find success with this. And, and a lot of times, because as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, is, you know, it's not covered by insurance. So start low, go slow, because you might su- find success at two, three, two, three, five milligrams. And it could save you a lot of money compared to just going right out of the gate, you know, taking 25 milligrams. Uh, and that's not for everybody. And again, that's why I always, share about you know the age of the patient the weight of the patient the current the sensitivity of the patient you know um you know and i i john sometimes i better when they journal um sometimes i tell them either to take a picture and print it out or if they can take the label slap that label that you got from where you bought it in your journal Oh, so and you don't just rip it so off and throw it away like you I You don't do. have to. Do- <laughs> Sorry. I probably should keep a Take journal. Take a picture of <laughs> That's it. That's right. Yeah, because, okay. Because what will happen, I think that's so fascinating about this plant and why when we talk about experts, I agree with John, it's a daily learning event because just when you think you've got it, oh. something changes. Or just when a patient thinks they've hit that perfect a dosing, maybe now the cannabis that worked for them, they grow it differently and it's not working for them the same. Or right. or they've changed, maybe right. they've lost weight and now all of a sudden they're stoned right. and they had never been stoned before. So all those things are so important to write down because otherwise you just have your memory and, right. and, you don't re- and you're not getting the most out of your, as John pointed out very well, that it's an expensive purchase. Right. And you wanna make sure that you get the most out of that purchase. No question. Yeah. Do you think we'll see a day where the insurance companies will at least offer uh, a, even a percentage of what it costs to go to a dispensary? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that day is coming. I mean, we've been hearing about it since, shoot, 2011 or 2012. I remember I would have conversations with these companies saying, hey, we were looking to get in, into the insurance. And so it, it, I'm, it, I think it's definitely a next, next step. Um, let me, I'll tell you two stories. One, let me back up, back up on the journaling part. As Beth was mentioning, you know, depends on two. If you've eaten, you know, uh, how much are you taking your medicine right after you've eaten? So you have a full stomach. Um, you know, it's like, you know, uh, I'll use wine because my we're in California and my brother's been in the wine business for twenty something years. But you know, um, have some food in your system. If you're going to feel you're going to feel more intoxicated if you don't have any food in your system. Same thing with cannabis. If you're taking a sublingual dropper. If you're taking uh, an edible in some cases, you know, are you doing it at nighttime? Are you on other medication? And so that's why it's really important to, to, to journal. Um, oh, and John, I wanted to mention one thing. Oh, you have another story. Go for, I'm sorry. Go for your story. I have a story. lot of stories, Jimmy. And in and, and talking to you uh, offline, you know, you, I know you and I can go back and forth to story to story. I, I share stories with Beth, and she's like, tell me more, tell me more. But here's doing something. doing it again. That, that, that's that, it. That was I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. I said, go that's, ahead. Good. That's all right. Um, yeah. But B- Beth and I, our, our five minute calls go two hours and five minutes <laughs> with Beth and I. We'd go da 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 da. So, um, have you it, ever thought about recording those conversations and then well, turning so, them into a podcast, John? Yeah, we we have numerous times while we were in the car. It's like, God, we should just sit here and record our, our drive, you know? Yeah, um, like the drive-in. Right. Cannabis car. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, um, so it's a story. one thing that I thought, here's something for you, Jimmy, that, that when you talk about insurance, and it's, and it's funny because no, insurance is not covered yet. But this thing that blows my mind. Ready for this one? Pet insurance covers cannabis for the animals and they will put right on the pet insurance you know when you're submitting a claim cannabis medicine for my pet and they cover it i don't know how much they cover it but they cover it at the same time it is illegal for veterinary uh, doctors vets to recommend cannabis to their patients 
And I just, that just blows my mind. You know, it's like, yeah, you, vets can't recommend it, but you can put cannabis and we will, we will reimburse you whatever that number is on there. Um, not advising anybody to break the law, but I'm certain some people have said, yeah, you know, hey, a spot. I'm putting Buster's cannabis. been dead for a while, but yeah, he needs I, his cannabis. Yeah, exactly. But I'm gonna, but I'm gonna still, still do that. So again, you know, yeah, I'm, again, I'm not advi- advising oh. anybody to break oh. the law, but that's that's what I've seen in seen in the industry, and uh, it's funny. So do I think it's coming? I do think it's coming. That insurance company will uh, be involved sooner than later. You know, I mean, everything is, you know, after this upcoming election, you know, we're at 33 states in washington dc and i you know i think that number will definitely go up um it, and i've spoken about this before is the federal government ready for this i'm not sure i don't know you oh. know i mean we're we're recreationally legal or adult use here in, in california um and it has pushed out a lot of true medical patients it's pushed out a lot of true yes. medical doctors who who um are there to help with guidance and dosing milligram dosing as you mentioned um, you know, and now these doctors have been put out of business because everyone's like, well, I don't need to, I don't need to meet with a doctor. I can just go in there and, and uh, go to a dispensary because I'm over 21 and buy whatever I need. And so I just think there should be more guidance when it comes to this because it is medicine for a lot of people, you know, and I think it's nothing wrong with it a recreational, but I just think when you're dealing with someone like my father-in-law or like my wife, you know, you want some medical guidance, true medical guidance when it comes to uh, cannabis, because you can incorporate them with other modalities, um, uh, allopathic, as well as homeopathic, as well as uh, integrative. You know, you can do that. And then the same thing with a lot of pain patients, they find success with uh, um, with uh, splitting their pharmaceuticals with cannabis. And instead of taking 20 milligrams of some pharmaceutical, you can and again, I'm not a doctor, but I I talked to one of your, your doctors who knows about titrating, but a lot of pain patients can take 10 milligrams of this pharmaceutical, so it's a little easier on their gut, and add a cannabinoid um, uh, protocol and have the same results as a 25 milligram dose of the pharmaceutical, but then now they're, they've lowered, the, lowered their dose and combined cannabis and having longer, safer uh, results as well. And fascinating stuff. One of the things I wanted to say, actually this is a shared story, but um, one of the reasons why starting low and going slow is important, I think, is twofold. Number one, you don't want somebody to get blazingly stoned on their first experience with cannabis because I've met a number of people who said I had a very bad experience with it and I won't go back to it. Right. They were overdosed. Yep. That's what it was. Yep. They weren't no, they weren't overdosed in what we think of overdosing that means. What I mean is they, they just received they took too much. <laughs> yeah, and so it was unpleasant. It doesn't kill you. It's just unpleasant. No. But extremely unpleasant. Yes. Yeah. However, there are people that have never had cannabis in their lifestyle or have never tried it and they'll take cannabis and they can repeat it and repeat it and they'll you'll hear them say I never get high it never right. works I never get high right because those receptors are starting to wake up and then what will happen is they'll have a false sense of security that they can like superdose and they're right. superman right and then all of a sudden bam bam is right yeah. and John and I saw that happen yeah. And and so for new patients, that's why I tell them if you don't feel anything, just stay with the low dose until you start noticing something and now you can start changing it. So I don't want people to think conversely it doesn't work because they feel nothing because they actually may not feel something for a couple of times and then they'll start feeling it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and those are the stories I heard back in the 60s and 70s. Too. Yes. Uh, sometimes it just didn't work the first time. Right. Well, you got to do it a few more times, all right? And, and back then it was 7% THC. Right. But not that I remember. Yes, I do remember it. It's okay. I, yeah, at you this point in my life, it. hey, John, how do we find out about the United Patients Group if somebody wanted to get in touch with you? Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Um, you can go to unitedpatientsgroup.com. Um, we have uh, uh, loaded information and education. That's what we pride ourselves on. Our tagline is be informed, be well. Um, I do a regular podcast and have top doctors um, <clears throat> in the industry speaking about everything from cancer to fibromyalgia to pain to autoimmune diseases, et cetera, et cetera. And we add 
uh, a new podcast uh, once or twice a week. And so you can check us out there. Check me out there. And, uh, Absolutely. Well, actually, John, well, if you and I ever can connect and talk yeah. about how we might help each other out, as opposed to doing an interview, I think there's I a way for us to work together and get those podcasts uh, to the people that are following us as well. And we'd love to share uh, with you, too, because you bring so much to the table. Do you guys offer an online certificate course? Um, no, but I work with a lot of, no. Okay. No, we would do, so, so um, for our listeners, my, my wife, Corinne, passed away uh, three years ago, uh, like right about now, October, October 2017 from pancreatic cancer. And so um, anybody going through any ailment as, as severe as cancer, I just send you a, uh, a big warm hug and stay positive. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a, like I said, it doesn't discriminate. Um, but, you know, but Corinne and I did a lot of conferences, and our conferences were all CME approved, continuing medical education in cannabinoid uh, therapeutics. And so, um, you know, so no, we do not do online online courses. Everything else is, and it's funny you talk about online, Jimmy. Every time you text me, I'm on a Zoom call, and I told Beth, I go, he must think I'm just blowing him off. But every time you text me, I'm in the middle of Zoom call. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed that I can't pick up his phone. It's like, I'm on a Zoom call. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is what we've turned to nowadays. Really like today, I've done, you're my fourth. Uh, I've done three Zoom calls and now, and then your call here with this one. So I think we're just so used to just like, oh yeah, I think Zoom is just going to be another word in the in the dictionary, like Google it is, you know? And uh, so I'm not avoiding you. I'd love to do something. <laughs> I didn't think that. I just thought it was funny that it, it, we get you on here, which is great. But man, I wanna, yeah. I just want to talk with you about how we can share yeah. content and what have you. And uh, I so appreciate you coming on, though, with Beth. That just made sense to me when, when Beth said yes. Yeah. I was like, oh, maybe we can get John on the phone, too. Oh, uh, yeah. And it worked out, worked out great. And, so and it worked out great. It and yeah, thank you. And I look forward to connecting. And one day, yeah. uh, one day, one day, we'll all be hugging again. Right, John? You know, I, I, you, I always say that to people as well. You know, one day, because right now it's just fist bumps, el elbow bumps, and, and, and uh, foot kicks. You right. know, like, hey. You know, and so uh, stay healthy and um, thank you for thinking of me, one, and, and bringing me on the show, including me on your show. And uh, I, you're in great hands with Beth there. So thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Jimmy. Nice to meet you again. And, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You bet. Thank you, John Malanka yeah. from the United uh, Patients Group. So can you tell me how the two of you got together? So, John... Back in 2013, I entered the I entered the industry, mm -hmm. and um, I went. I was one of under a hundred nurses that joined the that were members of the ACNA, the American Cannabis Nurse Association. Gotcha. Um, Mary Lynn Mathry, who started Patients Out of Time, mm -hmm. which is also a very trusted source for educate for uh, if you want to go and check her site. Um, I don't know how active she's been this year, but she typically has an annual um, conference. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that goes has had Raphael Mishulam at her conferences. Cool. So, By so, the way, you say his name so easily. If I look at it, I can say it, but I can't. It's not wrote yet. So it's yeah, like, I it's that Israeli it's scientist Mashalam. researcher guy, you know, Mashulam or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think it's Mashulam. Yeah. But I'm, but I and I could read it in Hebrew. I just want there you to you know go. that I can read it in Hebrew. I wouldn't know what it meant, but I could read it in Hebrew. I can say it like it rolls off <laughs> right. my tongue, but you can read it That's in right. Hebrew. That's right. There you, so you go. Between me. us, what you, we can. Right. <laughs> like the, right. So um, there was a, so uh, concurrently to that conference, they wrote, uh, had an ACNA soft certification training program, and mm -hmm. it was sponsored by United Patients Group. Uh -huh. And so John was there. Yeah. And the craziest thing was it was a big conference center, and I was dying for a cup of coffee, and there was no cup of coffee. And he was in the back standing there, and I said to him and whoever he was standing with, his friend, I said, can you believe they have a nurses' conference and I can't find a cup of coffee? And true to form, John ran out and got a box of Joe and brought it back so the nurses could have coffee. And that's how I met John Malanka back in like 2014, and I've so I've known him for many years. Yeah, yeah. And, and think about that for a yes. second, right? Yes. That's the drug that everyone has accepted in their lives. Oh yes. Okay, and pick a day, two days, and try and stop. Exactly. 
You raging know, headache. A raging headache, right? Raging, but yes. But you stop cannabis for a day or two. You don't really notice it. We are pro-cannabis media.